Hello everyone. Today I will be reviewing collagen biosynthesis and some of the points related with the collagen biosynthesis. Now the collagen is a most abundant extracellular matrix protein. Collagen is predominantly synthesized by fibroblasts. Even the muscle cells and epithelial cells can synthesize collagen molecule. This collagen molecule is a long rigid structure which has got three alpha chains. So it means it has three polypeptide chains which are referred as alpha chains. And these three alpha chains, they will interwound each other and make a rope-like structure called collagen molecule. Now there are more than 25 types of collagens in our body. Each of these 25 times, more than 25 types of collagen molecules, they are all made up of three alpha chains. And these three alpha chains, they can, of, uh, they can be of different types. Like type 1 collagen, it has got two alpha 2 chains and one alpha 1 chain. Whereas type 2 collagen molecule, it has got all three of them as alpha 3 chains. Note that this alpha chain present in a collagen molecule, it has got a primary structure of that. It has got a repeated sequence of glycine XY. In this glycine XY sequence, so in the Y position, there will be proline and hydroxyproline. In the X position, it can be any other amino acid. So it means glycine is there and then there is any other amino acid there in the X position. And then there is in Y position, there is a proline molecule, which eventually it can be converted into a hydroxyproline molecule. It means every third position in a collagen molecule, you are going to find a glycine and you are going to find proline or hydroxyproline. Basically, it's a modified form of proline. Primary structure of collagen molecules, so which has glycine, X, proline or hydroxyproline. So because of the presence of proline, so it is going to bend because proline is an amino acid. It has got a rigid structure in its side chain. So that means it leads to kinks or bends in a polypeptide chain. Because of this alpha chain will look like alpha helix. Note that it is a collagen molecule. The structure is alpha chain. It's not an alpha helix structure. These collagen molecules, so there can be a, they can be found at different places in our body. Like type 1 collagen molecule, it is found in connective tissues, it is found in bone, it is found in uh, tendons. So as it is shown in the, uh, in the side table here, so any, extra, so any tissue in our body, if it ends as 1, so generally it contains type 1 collagen. Now type 2 collagen is generally found in cartilaginous tissue or uh, cartil cartilaginous tissue so it, which I have written in the table here. So it is easy to remember cartilage so cart if you read it as cartilage so it is type 2 collagen there. Now type 3 collagen molecule is found in reticular fibers which are present or uh, around the organs and other tissues. So reticular fibers, if you read it as retricular fibers, so that means it has type 3 collagen there. Now type 4 collagen is generally present in the basal lamina or the basement membrane of uh, glomerulus. So this basement membrane or basal lamina of the stratified squamous epithelial cells, you can read it as uh, under the floor, that means it reads as 4, so that is type 4 collagen. Like this. So, uh, this type of collagens can be present in different tissues. Now, let's move on to see how exactly this collagen is synthesized in our body. Now, the collagen is synthesized over the rough endoplasmic ribosomes present over rough endoplasmic reticulum and the type of collagen that is synthesized means the alpha chain that is synthesized there, we call that as pre-pro-alpha chain as it is written, as I have written here. So, the alpha chain that is synthesized over the rough endoplasmic reticulum is referred as pre-pro-alpha chain and this pre-pro-alpha chain it will have a, a special amino acid sequence especially at the amino terminus and that is referred as a signal peptide or a signal sequence and this signal peptide it is going to lead to this pre-pro-alpha chain into the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum. So, lumen of 
rough endoplasmic reticulum to pre pro alpha chain it moves into lumen of rough endoplasmic reticulum and it will be converted into pro alpha chain so what happens here so pre pro alpha chain it has got a special amino acid sequence at the amino terminus that is going to lead lead that particular pre pro alpha chain to get into the lumen of rough endoplasmic reticulum and in the rough endoplasmic reticulum this signal sequence or special amino acid sequence present in the amino terminus is clipped and it will be digested and that particular uh, chain which is left over now is referred as pro alpha chain now there will be modification on this pro alpha chain as i already told you each collagen molecule it has got three alpha chains that means you really need three pro alpha chains now these pro individual pro alpha chains they will undergo hydroxylation process in the lumen of rough endoplasmic reticulum so pro alpha chains will undergo hydroxylation so where exactly hydroxylation will be going on over pro alpha chains now randomly selected proline and lysine amino acids in this pro alpha chains they will undergo hydroxylation process i will repeat it randomly selected proline and lysines in pro alpha chains now selective pro prolines will undergo hydroxy proline formation by an enzyme called prolyl hydroxylase enzyme and this prolyl hydroxylase enzyme it is going to introduce hydroxyl group to a proline molecule and convert that into hydroxy proline and that happens in the lumen of rough endoplasmic reticulum and that's because prolyl hydroxylase enzyme is present in the lumen of rough endoplasmic reticulum similarly lysine amino acid like randomly selected lysine amino acid in this pro alpha chain it will undergo hydroxylation by an enzyme called lysyl hydroxylase now lysyl hydroxylase again it introduces hydroxyl group to lysine and convert that into hydroxy lysine molecule now with this what we have done in the lumen of rough endoplasmic reticulum is we are converting few of the prolines into hydroxy proline and few of the lysines into hydroxy lysine basically we have in increased number of hydroxyl containing amino acids normally we have three hydroxyl containing amino acid in a polypeptide chain and they are uh, serine threonine and tyrosine now what we have done with this hydroxylation process in the lumen of rough endoplasmic reticulum is we have introduced two more hydroxyl containing amino acids it means now we have five hydroxyl containing amino acids in this pro alpha chain molecule and those are we have serine threonine tyrosine plus we have hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine molecules now what is the purpose of increasing these hydroxyl containing amino acids it's because these hydroxyl containing amino acids they will participate in hydrogen bond formation why because as we have already seen each collagen molecule it needs uh, three alpha chains and they interwoven each other to make a rope like collagen structure now these three alpha, uh, three pro alpha chains need to come together and they need to interact with one another and that interaction needs lot of hydrogen bonds and that means you need need to have more hydroxyl containing amino acids that is why two enzymes that is prolyl hydroxylase and lysyl hydroxylase as it is shown in the uh, in the figure on, uh, on this side so you can observe that prolyl hydroxylase converts proline into hydroxyproline lysyl hydroxylase it converts lysine into hydroxylysine and thereby they can participate in hydrogen bond formation all right so three pro alpha chains they will interact with one another starting from the carboxy terminus especially in the carboxy terminus and in the amino terminus we have a large collection of cysteine amino acid cysteine which has got sulfur containing which is a sulfur containing amino acid with the thiol group sh group so these cysteine molecules they will interact with one another between the pro alpha chains as i have shown here one pro alpha chain interacts with another pro alpha chain with the disulfide bridge and other pro alpha chain interacting with the third pro alpha chain with the disulfide bridge so it means all three pro alpha chains they come together and as they come together so they we have five hydroxyl containing amino acids 
and these five hydroxyl containing amino acids they will make a hydrogen bond formation and this is how you are making a triple helix structure and that is a procollagen molecule. So right now what we have done here is three pro alpha chains they come together hydrogen bond formation going on and all this is going on in the lumen of rough endoplasmic reticulum. So now we got a procollagen molecule which is a loosely knitted uh, procollagen molecule not really matured procollagen molecule no, mature collagen here. So it is all stabilized by hydrogen bond formation chains are coming together by disulfide bridges and uh, by the time you make procollagen molecule so procollagen molecule now it is ready to move into Golgi complex. So procollagen moves into the cis Golgi. So as it moves into the cis Golgi and as it is transiting into the medial Golgi, so further glycosylation process will be going on in, on to this procollagen molecule. So procollagen molecule moving into Golgi complex. So as it is moving into the Golgi complex in the cis Golgi, medial Golgi, as it is going into the trans Golgi, so there will be glycosylation going on in the Golgi complex. So where exactly gly glycosylation goes on? So the lysine, some of the lysines and hydroxylysine molecules, they will undergo glycosylation with the addition of glucose and galactose. And we are not sure why this uh, glycosylation exactly going on in, on procollagen molecule. Anyway, so glycosylation goes on and your procollagen is moving into cis, medial and trans Golgi and it will make a vesicles or secretory vesicles and these secretory vesicles they will be secreted out or they will be exocytosis of this procollagen molecule into extracellular matrix. So procollagen molecule will be exocytosed into extracellular matrix and in the extracellular matrix what happens? In the extracellular matrix there are two enzymes and that is N-terminus procollagen propeptidase enzyme and C-terminus procollagen propeptidase. These two enzymes are extracellular matrix enzymes. What they do is they are going to clip that uh, disulfide bulges present on the uh, C-terminus and the N-terminus. In the C-terminus and N-terminus because of the high large amounts of cysteine amino acids so there will be bulges created because of disulfide bridges and these disulfide bridge containing bulges are clipped by uh, C-terminus procollagen propeptidase uh, which is clipping C-terminus bulge and N-terminus procollagen propeptidase will clip N-terminus bulge and that's when you get tropocollagen molecule. So procollagen molecule is converted into tropocollagen molecule and that happens in the extracellular matrix after taking out two bulges on either side C and N terminus. Now what will happen to the tropocollagen molecule? Tropocollagen molecule further it will undergo a cross linking process which we call it as collagen cross linking. So collagen cross linking process will be going on in the extracellular matrix. So this collagen cross linking what, what, ha what exactly happens in collagen cross linking process? Collagen cross linking process it involves two processes one is shift base formation and other is aldol condensation as it is shown in the figure here in shift base formation so some of the lysine uh, residues and hydroxylysine residues they will undergo oxidative deamination process and that job it will be done by an enzyme called lysyl oxidase enzyme this lysyl oxidase enzyme is an extracellular matrix located enzyme and it needs copper. So lysyl oxidase which needs copper as a cofactor so it is going to oxidatively deaminate lysines and hydroxylysine molecules and there you get uh, aldehyde containing molecule and this aldehyde containing group molecule so it will uh, it will interact with the another lysine or hydroxylysine in another pro alpha chain within that tropocollagen molecule there will be interaction between the chain, one alpha chain interacting with another alpha chain. So where the amino group is going to interact with the aldehyde group. So we call that process as shift base formation and that is an example of collagen cross linking process. Or two aldehyde groups, they in one, one alpha chain, one aldehyde group, another alpha chain, another aldehyde group, it can interact with one another 
and that process we call it as aldol condensation. So, we have shift based formation or aldol condensation, these two processes are referred as collagen cross linking process and at the end of that collagen cross linking what you get is it is tropocollagen is converted into mature collagen molecule and it has increased its tensile strength because each pro alpha chains they are all cross linked with one another and the tensile strength of a collagen increases because of this. So this is how we have synthesized a mature collagen molecule. So let me quickly review that. So we have free pro alpha chain synthesized over uh, the surface of rough endoplasmic reticulum. So this pre pro alpha chain it has got a special signal uh, peptide which will allow this pre pro alpha chain to go, go into the lumen of rough endoplasmic reticulum. Once it gets into the lumen of rough endoplasmic reticulum that signal sequence is clipped and you got pro alpha chain. You need three pro alpha chain to make a collagen molecule. So three pro alpha chains they come together and basically there will be hydroxylation process going on in the lumen of rough endoplasmic reticulum done by prolyl hydroxylase and lysyl hydroxylase. These two enzymes they need ascorbate as their coenzyme. Now with that hydroxylation we have more number of hydroxyl containing amino acids and also these pro three pro alpha chains they come together with the disulfide bridge formation and hydroxyl containing amino acids will participate in hydrogen bond formation. So overall you get a pro-collagen molecule. Now this pro-collagen molecule move into Golgi complex. So in the Golgi, Golgi complex the more and more hydrogen bond formation occurs and also glycosylation process will be going on and as it moves into trans Golgi and clips off as a vesicle. So vesicle will be secreted outside into the extracellular matrix and in the extracellular matrix so there will be clipping of two bulges on either side N and C terminus and these bulges are clipped and that clipping will be done by C terminus procollagen propeptidase, N terminus procollagen propeptidases and there you get tropocollagen molecule. Now this tropocollagen molecule again in the extracellular matrix will undergo collagen cross linking process done by lysyl oxidase which needs copper and during this process there are two processes which are involved in collagen cross linking one is aldol condensation other is shift base formation. These two processes they will link or cross link uh, alpha chains together and make a mature collagen and that happens because of collagen cross linking process. So this is how we will uh, we synthesize collagen molecule in the in our body and it will be present in the extracellular matrix of different tissues more than 25 types of collagens are present and they have their own function depending on how they are arranged. Arrangement of collagen in that tissue it matters what will what is the exact function of that particular collagen in our body. Say like in basement membrane of kidney so type 4 collagen it has got a long mesh, uh, mesh like network whereas in the cornea so type 1 collagen molecule it has got a systematic arrangement to give a transparency to the cornea whereas in the bone so collagen molecules they have got angulated arrangement and that will give a mechanical strength to a bone. So this is how we synthesize collagen. I hope this video has helped you in understanding collagen biosynthesis. If you have any comments or uh, questions don't hesitate to put them in the comment, comment section below. If you like the video give thumbs up and for regular updates you can consider uh, subscribing to this channel. Thanks for watching.